All right, guys, KB32 here, check it out. We're sitting at the review table, and in front of me, I've got this beautiful little receiver set sent over to the channel from the guys over there at Bear Creek Arsenal. This is their 223 Wild 16 inch Park Rise M4 barrel, one and eight twist carbon length gas system, this 15 inch M lock upper billet receiver set, and check it out. This thing uh, is only $249. Now, real quick shout out to the guys over there at Callaway Ballistics. They are sponsoring the channel, sending ammo out for testing. And without them, uh, it'd be a very expensive trip. And I've been I've been fronting the money on the uh, with the help of the Patreon guys. Thank you very much. But I've been fronting the money for the ammo. Uh, shot this last week with this same barrel. Uh, did pretty good. Uh, with, with a 77 grain, this same barrel was popping out, oh, I don't know, one inch, three quarter inch MOA. Absolutely incredible. And they do make 77 grain. So with that being said, uh, you get a discount code KB32 for uh, free shipping with orders over $200. So that's, to me, free shipping is just like anything else. I'll look at $500 worth of stuff and if they wanna charge me $12 for shipping, I'm like, screw that. <laughs> I need free shipping. All right, so let's talk about this thing. Uh, so basically, this is the information off their website. This hybrid chamber was developed to accommodate the match grade civilian ammunition of the 223 and the high pressures of the 556. So, so Matt, people are asking me what a 223 Wild was. So anyway, that's it. Um, so the billet upper is uh, made from 7075, a billet of aircraft grade aluminum. And uh, there's some other details in here, but uh, I will tell you this, uh, I've, I've been impressed with this guy right here. But to show you the details on this thing, look at that. The, the milling cuts are pretty cool, but 200 and, what did I say, two, wait a minute, hold on, let me look at that up again. 250 bucks for a billet up a receiver and a hand guard, it does pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, little deal from the guys over there at Kinetic Development. We're gonna check to make sure to see how well inspect these things are. With that kinetic development, that when it snaps in, if it's not inspect, it'll move around. Does that mean that if you use a regular M, M lock, you can't tighten it up? No, it doesn't mean that. But anyway, I took the liberty of going ahead and loosening up the screws because I want to show you guys what this thing looks like. Again, there's the barrel. Now, I've been impressed with this barrel so much that I went ahead and bought four of them, okay, uh, which is on that Econ build series that we did last week. And you saw how well those perform. Minute a man, two, in two inches is acceptable to me for a uh, $99 barrel, but a complete upper for 250 bucks, you gotta be kidding. I don't know why they use these spiral uh, flash hiders. Uh, do they work? Somebody has any experience with them? Let me know. Uh, I noticed there's no, uh, what do you call it, crush washer on this thing. You don't have to use a crush washer. How about that? Because they're spiraled all the way around so they don't have to be timed or sequenced. Uh, some scratches on it. I'm not worried about that on an upper that weighs or costs that much. Let me go ahead and let's take a look at this rail. This is not bad, this rail system. Hold on one second, let's just weigh this bad boy out. Let me move some of this crap out of the way. I'm in the process of setting up a reloading table with all the, the brass prep as well as uh, a bunch of other stuff. All right, so that thing weighs 11.9 ounces. In comparison, let's take, I don't know, maybe this uh, Geisley. This is their Mark 8 handguards, one of my favorite handguards. This is what's gonna go on the premium rifle build series. So in case you wanted to know. So that guy right there is 12.8. So, you know, you're seeing the difference, 11.9, 12.8. You got a little bit more beef on this guy, uh, but I will say this, I'm pretty impressed so far. So let's take a look at how the M-Lock line up. Stand by. All right, one of my problems is I just have way too much gun crap going on. Tomorrow, we're gonna be taking a look at this guy right here. This is the primary arms. This is their SLX-1 power micro prism. This thing is bad to the bone. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is the, uh, kinetic development. This is their pick rail that attaches directly to an M-lock. Now let me show you what the correct way, the correct fitment. Uh, Geisley gets their shit right. There is no movement on these things. When I had those handrails, where the hell did I get them from? Gun Tech. There was movement on there which may affect your accuracy, especially when you got a bipod and you got a little bit of movement. So here we go. Let's see. So yeah, those won't even fit in there. Ugh. Does that mean that these won't fit in M-Lock? No, it just means that these, these, these are not cut to spec. Let's try it at a different location. 
Ugh, nope. Okay. So there's the handguard. Take it for what it's worth. I like the cuts. You've got some uh, QD attachment points right there and on the front. That's nice. I do like that. Uh, YFS screws right here. No big deal. Let's put that to the side. All right. What are we looking at as far as a bolt carrier group? Because I know a lot of people that's a primary uh, concern. Let's go ahead and pull this thing apart. And let's bring the camera in. Here we go. Okay, so basically this thing does come with the, just a standard mil spec uh, style, uh, what do you call this thing? Charging handle. Anodized, not sure. Looks like a powder coat or some kind of coating on there. Uh, man, I may have shot this thing. I don't know. I don't think I have. But uh, anyway, if I have, welcome to uh, edition number two. YFS state screws, those are not grade eight uh, right off the bat. Uh, no information on this thing. So basically uh, on their website, I would assume that it's just a standard, uh, I don't know, uh, let's see here. Nope, no more additional information on this thing. So it is what it is. It's uh, Let's take it apart and see how the uh, bolt looks on this thing. I'm not going to go through the pinning and the process of gauging this thing. It, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we'll go and we'll analyze and figure out why. Okay, uh, black steel, what do you call this thing? Uh, firing pin, go ahead and pull this guy over. I may have shot this, I don't know. Man, that should not be like that. All right, Let's see if it's identified. All right, MPI, it is identified as being MPI tested. Usually when you're talking about this uh, level of testing, it is uh, batch tested. So what they do is they take about a batch of 10, 20, or whatever their uh, company wants to do, and they go ahead and they test one out of 20 with a high pressure round. Uh, also that's called high pressure testing, and then they do a magnetic uh, inspection on this thing. Um, got the little O-ring on there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I do actually have the tool to go ahead and remove the uh, the, uh, ex what do you call that thing? The ejector pin, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and put this thing back together. I am concerned a little bit about the sizing on this thing because that, that could play a role down the road. Uh, maybe get it somewhere, get it broken in, and we'll see how the uh, coating is. You can see where it's scratching in right there. All right, let's go ahead and put this bad boy back together. Hard to get in there. I'm not going to worry about that right now. All right, so let's do this real quickly. Um, we've got the barrel here. Uh, M4 feed ramps look good. Barrel extensions look good. Again, like I said, I've got a bunch of these barrels. For the money, I think they're one of the best. What we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to go ahead and get our scope up and running. And uh, let's do this. Here's the scope right here. And we'll go ahead and hit the record button now what let's see here so what I want to do we want to go on in here I want to check out our locking lugs and see how nasty and dirty they are and like I said this thing has been fired uh, either by me that I can't remember firing it or function testing it but let's check that out man oh god that's hideous it's not too bad I've seen worse boys and girls Let's go ahead and bring it on in here. Now we're checking out the uh, lands and the grooves. Those are really good. And what I'm looking for is a consistent start on those uh, lands. So uh, right there you can see, yeah, maybe that one's a little out of alignment, but the jump, and, and am I worried about super performance or accuracy out of this guy? No. Um, but we're going to go ahead. It's a two-part series. Let's go ahead and follow these things down. You can see uh, pretty decent, and these are, well, we got some grooves in there right there. Look at that. Um, yeah. That's where the drill is getting, and what's happened is when they put, pulled it with the uh, button, uh, the lands are not as pronounced as you can see right there. So the accuracy on this guy is probably not going to be as good as, say, as the, one of the other barrels. Um, I'm going to stop right here because I want to show you guys another barrel that I actually purchased from Midway USA. And I put the scope in it the other day. And the reason I'm showing you this is because of the, the drill marks. Stand by. 
All right, so one of the things I wanted to do was build something a little neater, really cooler. So I ordered this guy from the guys over there at Midway USA, and they sent it out of their shop. Now, yeah, it is dimpled here, um, but I want to show you this. Now, I called the guys at Bear Creek Arsenal, and I couldn't get an answer out of anybody on this. And I'm not going to say that they made these or not, but if you can look at the stamping on the barrel, they're, pre they're pretty close. But... Um, what I want to show you is this in this barrel. It starts off looking really good. I mean, that's that's a good 416 stainless steel. Now there are different levels of 416. A lot of these things come out of China, China. But look, look at the uh, the drilling through the barrel. So what happens is they drill the bore out and then they pull a uh, a device through it, the button cut, and it creates the grooves. Uh, but look at that. Now, I don't know. Let's go ahead and run it all the way down. Okay, see, so you see how it is more, cons it's beautiful down here. Um, if you look at the side screen, you can see the lands and how tall they are in comparison with the other one. I don't, I can't, I don't have a means or methods to mic those out. But uh, let's go ahead and turn the uh, scope up. This is, a, this is, guys, this is what I have fun at, okay? Um, you can see gas hole got some cuts on it we'll probably run a brush through it so a lot of times with we'll, man shit oh no that sir is a, a shaving let's see if we can knock that off you can see on the side right there <laughs> there you can see it a little better now i covered up a big old nice piece of shaving covering up the gas hole yeah we like looking at our gas holes and comparing them Towards the end of this thing, it actually looks really good, with exception of right there where we're starting to feed them. Okay, so anyway, Midway USA, I'm not worried about it, but just be uh, beware, buyer beware, right? Um, so anyway, let's go back and see if this thing smooths out towards the end, but you can see the cuts are not that bad. Um, this is a phosphate, magnesium phosphate, but look at that. And again, for $250, uh, am I going to whine and cry about this? No, you're going to hopefully have a nice functioning uh, rifle barrel, upper receiver, that's going to do what it needs to do. Now, let's see here. We'll go ahead and orientate this thing so we can pick up the, uh, um, you can see the carbon in the barrel. And we'll go ahead and see if we can find this guy's gas hole. Because you know how much I love gas holes. <laughs> Okay, hold on. There we go. Just penetrate. You got to penetrate. You got to get it in there. Okay. All right. So there's the gas hole. You can see that it has been test fired or fired. And I honestly can't remember if I did it or not. All right. So the whole thing together, uh, $249 for this thing. You got a uh, military, what do you call this thing? This is a... Uh, just a regular dust cover, regular Ford Assist. But I do like the way that it's cut. It does look good. And uh, we'll see how it shoots. Part two is going to be taking it out and doing the range test. I would, while we're here, let's go ahead and check and see. Oh, that's, that is not the one I want to use. I want to use these guys. I like to see, here's the thing. Uh, I like to see if these guys are SAE or are they metric? Okay, so this is this is good stuff. Um, tight <laughs> and loose. So uh, one of the options or the big things that I always do, if you're going to buy a pre-assembled uh, upper receiver or anything, uh, go through it and check to ensure that it's tight. Uh, the handguard. Uh, screws were all pre pretty tight. I did I didn't have any problems with that, but that's it, man. The Bear Creek Arsenal, and and I would anticipate that we're probably going to get at least a two inch group out of it. But what I really want to know is I want to sit down and I want to uh, go ahead and check for uh, performance to make sure that it actually will work. And put this away. How do you keep your tools in one place? Uh, you, well, what is that, a five? Four millimeter. I don't even know why that's out. 
you go ahead and you put them back as soon as you're done using them. So the, the handguard is held in place with uh, six screws, one of which just went into the receiver that I'll have to find. Uh, I hope you guys found this video to be educational and helpful in your efforts to find a decent $250 upper receiver. Bear Creek Arsenal makes some pretty good stuff as far as I'm concerned on the uh, for the economics. Um, one of the things that I gotta line this up yeah, I did. Not bad. Another thing that I always check is how the upper, the receiver rails from here all the way down line up. And this one's lined up really, really well. Very nicely done. Okay, with that being said, guys, again, if you uh, found that this video was helpful and educational and helping you make a decision, I think kb 32 Tech is also the... Uh, the discount code over there at Bear Creek Arsenal. I'm not sure if they're going to discount this guy just because it's discounted pretty well already. Uh, but yeah, I'm impressed for $249. I don't think you can go wrong. So KB32, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform. 24-7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. Hopefully we get out tomorrow and do the testing on this thing. And don't forget about Callaway Ballistics. KB32 tick. Tag. No, KB32 <laughs> discount code, free shipping on orders more than $200. Y'all be good. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24 7 for our freedom because freedom is not free. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already done so. I may have already said that, but it's okay. I can say it again. Y'all be good. I'm out of here.